Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Lunkers and Bucks. I'm Hayes Billy Creep, and today I continue my pre-hunt scouting of the Cavalier tract of the Dismal Swamp. It's a bow-only section, about a 758-acre park. I plan on hunting before work, so I need to find a spot close to the parking lot, and I'm also going to be putting up a game cam to make sure uh, that I've picked up a good spot. Um, so it's July, it's there. about 100 degrees. Uh, I'm going to get to it. Please like and subscribe. Thanks. All right. Mark my spot. Gotcha. So now I know where the hell I'm at and I can get back to it. So one of the things I'm thinking about as I'm looking over here, I mean, deer are everywhere. And I'm gonna hit this early. But in the fall, once these leaves come down, what well, looks to be pretty thick, not gonna be. A lot of maple trees in here. Leaves are coming down. They're gonna be wide open. So the stuff that looks thick isn't and the stuff that looks too thick is going to be where everything's at. That's what I'm thinking. And I'll usually sit right inside the thickest thing I can find or looking at the edge where it does open up and get clear. So there are some markers from last year. Bunch of plenty of trees right here. There's an oak. And what's the, the significant of that is a swamp full of uh, pines and maples. When those acorns come down, there's going to be stuff eating it. And it takes, I believe, 20 years before an oak tree actually has acorns, depending on the variety. And that one's over 20 years. So I like the spot, but it's a little too close to the uh, private land and other hunters. So I'm gonna go back a little bit further. You don't have to sit right on it. And I have found over the years, when you think there's no deer there, it's too thick, too crazy, it's usually because you don't want to go there, or I don't want to go there, and that's where the deer are at. So a lot of times, when I see a spot that I don't want to go through, that's where I go, just because I know Over the years, that's where they end up. There's another marker. Again, what I'm looking at here, nice big open spaces, good shot lanes. And again, deer come through here, but when it's on, 
Not really. It's an old tree stand. Another marker. One of the things I'll tell you about uh, public access, there's always a plethora of game wardens. And they have no problem coming in the woods looking for you. Me, I always make sure I got all my paperwork and there tends to be something you gotta purchase for everything. Bow stamp. Bear stamp, deer stamp, turkey stamp. Rules change per municipality, uh, county, state, federal. Hate to say it, but man, read that book. And at the very least, if you encounter a game warden, I've always found yes sir, no sir, it's the best course of action. Every so often I get goofy and man, that just really ticks them off. They got a job to do and to be quite honest with you, they've always been very respectful of the hunt and really aren't that mad until I get goofy. <laughs> so I just, over the years I've learned, just do what I'm supposed to, yes sir, no sir. Treat them with respect, but you will encounter them if you're in public access, so just do what they ask. I'm liking this. Again, a lot of these leaves are coming down in the winter, but there's a lot of other stuff in here that's shoulder high or just a little bit higher that'll hide their body. I'm not seeing any discernible trails or anything and they haven't started really scraping and doing all that pre-rut stuff, but. Go to way to out, don't want to go there. Where to find another waypoints.
All right. All right, what I'm doing now is looking for a tree close to the edge or in it that I can set my tree stand up. I'm gonna put my game cam right on the outside and leave it here. And this is pretty thick. Interesting. Some people ask me, how you get the deer out of here? When I'm way in, I backpack a uh, deer carrier with me. Big old wheels, cost about 150 bucks. But I had to drag a 200 pound pig once over sand, a couple football fields length. I was sick the rest of the day, so it went 150 bucks, and man, it is uh, worth every penny of it. Especially when you're hunting by yourself, you get a big deer, man. And it's this hot. With this many mosquitoes, <laughs> we are moving fast. All right. Couple trees I can get up in. It looks like there's some type of activity here. Maybe raccoon. But it's a spot that when it's rainy, yep, there's deer tracks here. It's wet. So we're taking wet, thick, not too far from a big old oak. A couple different trees. Not too far away from where the hunters are running some dogs. Some really thick stuff. All right, now the question is where? I get about 30, 40 years. 40, 30, 40 yards, depending on which camera I'm using. I'm not gonna spend a ton of money on cameras. Again, sometimes they get stolen and the real expensive ones at some point, just uh, overkill. And then the real world cheap ones never seem to get me what I want. So I've, I've found a $150 camera. It's usually where I go. And uh, I always end up with some form of and you can see those flies coming in, just going at it. But there's the uh, battery pack. And I've got several different cameras I've tried over the years. Basic small camera, nothing fancy. I like the uh, buttons on the outside instead of on the inside programming it. Uh, on the next episode, I'm actually going to put up the game cam, show you some best practices, uh, and actually share some of the pictures that we get. Please like and subscribe.